Hello, I'm Olena Grunyuk and we are recording our next episode of SME Banking Conversations in Warsaw. In a minute, I'm meeting Enrico Montanino, General Manager for EMEA at FaceFit, a company that provides biometric solutions worldwide. Enrico, I'm very glad to meet you in Warsaw. Welcome. And let's talk about uh, FaceFee. So this is a company headquartered in Spain, right? And uh, present worldwide, having customers all over the world with what I know, 200 and even more banks. So you are now entering Central Eastern Europe region and FaceFee is providing um, biometrics technology solutions. So tell us more about your company. Sure. So firstly, thank you for having me. Um, it's lovely to be uh, here in Poland and, and um, to be part of your club, so to speak. Um, so FaceFee's um, uh, core is around fighting financial crime through the use of biometrics. So what that means for us is our solutions focused on EKYC mm -hmm. uh, and AML. Um, and our value that we bring to the market is that we have a suite of biometrics uh, that allows customers to pick the best of breed uh, technology to provide remote verification through mobile or through web so that in this digital revolution that we have uh, particularly within the banking sector we enable our customers to ensure that the person that is enrolling onto a service is who they say they are mm -hmm. through the use of the suite of technologies that we have um, so thank you for having me mm -hmm. all right what is your what is your personal path and journey to face fee Excellent question, thank you. Um, so I've had the privilege of working um, in the technology sector for most of my life, mm -hmm. uh, particularly um, in biometrics. So when I left my last um, company, I was looking for a vendor that was focused on biometrics, that was um, moving into or focused on a sector that was adopting uh, you know, biometrics to enable uh, customers to have um, a better experience in using uh, different services that our customers offer. So when I was looking at the market, um, I, I came across FaceFee. Um, and what really interested me about FaceFee is that, number one, they're a global company. Mm -hmm. Number two, they had a huge uh, customer base, as you mentioned, over 200 banks globally with some of the biggest brands, including Santander. Oh. And it, it, you know, it caught my interest. And when I actually looked at the technology, what really interested me was that what they were looking at was how they could adopt biometrics but looking at it from the customer experience perspective mm -hmm. um, you know technology is so broad and so wide how it's used and how it's adopted really defines on if it's good or bad but what really liked what I liked about face fee is that it was easy to use customers liked it and actually it did exactly what our customers were looking for was to make it um, user-friendly so mm -hmm. when I looked at the technology I looked at the market it was a natural um, choice for me. I met the CEO, um, I looked at the company culture and um, I'm here today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. So if we come back here to the Central uh, Eastern European market, um, we can say that the digital maturity of the banks uh, is improving. As uh, end of the last year, 2022, 50% uh, of the banks uh, implemented the digital customer onboarding and I'm uh, mentioning here business customers uh, and um, mm, this is for the this is within the <coughs> online banking channels for the mobile banking uh, application this is this is the future I hope the nearest one and 70% uh, of the banks uh, implemented biometrics as a um, payment uh, authorization method. So yep. customers can choose one of the authorization methods. Uh, how do you see the development and the parts of implement implementation of biometric solutions for business customers in the financial sector? So, so we see a general trend that um, a lot of our customers, or the customers within the financial sector, business customers, are now adopting biometrics. Um, there are a number of reasons why we see that. Um, generally, I think people are now understanding the value that biometrics bring, mm -hmm. um, particularly to customers. Um, the, the whole journey, I think, is important. Um, I think we're all used to having quite um, 
a draconian way of uh, communicating with our banks and, and uh, banks um, approving certain transactions. Mm -hmm. But now with the adoption of biometrics, that whole user experience is significantly better and banks are seeing that now. And with the feedback from customers, that's, that transition is slowly being adopted from traditional to more digital, meaning you know the adoption of biometrics. You mentioned that 70% are, you know, in Central Europe, which is extremely high, is fantastic. Across Europe generally, that number kind of varies. It's actually lower in, okay. in you know, other countries. Mm -hmm. um, so slowly, slowly we're seeing that, um, that adoption increasing, which is great, obviously, for us. So, the, you know, the journey is one. The second thing is it's also helping customers um, feel better and secure about using digital services. Mm -hmm. um, there are different generations of um, users. The younger generation, obviously, are probably used to using digital services. The slightly older generation, of which I'm one myself, not too old, I must say, okay. um, the kind of the feeling of do I feel comfortable using digital services has been hit and miss. Mm -hmm. But what Biometrics is doing is it's helping people transition to digital banking because they can see that it's much safer, um, it, it's much securer, um, and it's helping people move, as I said, towards more digital banking. Mm -hmm. Also, it's helping banks and business customers meet compliance. Um, it is a heavily, heavily regulated area. So to meet certain standards, it's very difficult. And biometrics, um, EKYC and AML is certainly one of the areas that's helping our customers, banks, generally business customers, meet and adhere to compliance. So in a short answer to your question, and it's a very long answer to your question, okay. but the trend is definitely upwards. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, you know, different countries have adopted it in different levels. But certainly now we're seeing through customer um, satisfaction and, and um, reassurance of using digital services, the adoption is much higher. And as I said, for banks as well to meet compliance, it's certainly one of the tools to help them do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. From your perspective, um, what are the main challenges that your customers are facing right now in the financial sector? So there are a number of challenges that we see um, our customers facing, or generally within the um, financial sector. Something like one in five European banks, unfortunately, has been a victim of uh, financial crime, online uh, fraud, mm -hmm. uh, which unfortunately is, is, um, is, you know, is becoming the norm. Um, so how you fight that, how you fight against that is really, you know, the big challenge. Um, you know, technology is certainly um, becoming um, more advanced and that number of one in five is now luckily going the other way. Um, and, you know, one of our challenges and one of our aspirations is, is to become one of the vendors to help our customers um, fight the, you know, the criminals that are out there within the sector. Mm -hmm. Another challenge that we find is that as customers are adopting this technology is how that journey from their customers is. Um, there's a, a statistics I want to quote here, which is something like 60% of onboarding um, journeys for customers fails. So mm -hmm. to be clear, so from a customer that joins a new service, from the minute they download an app or goes onto their mm -hmm. website, through to actually being identified, 60% of them don't actually complete, or it doesn't uh, it doesn't complete, or there are errors. Which why? so it's a great question. Why? Um, there are a number of reasons for that. One is the actual experience. Mm -hmm. um, as a user myself of uh, this technology, it's a very, very frustrating journey. Um, I bank with a big bank. I won't mention them who they are. And I recently, only recently adopted biometrics to, um, to verify and authenticate not just myself, but also my transactions. And I can't tell you the amount of times that I go onto the app and the application is asking me to, um, to verify myself using face, where the system looks at me and says, blink, and I'm blinking, and it says blink, and I blink, and it says blink. It doesn't work. And it doesn't work. <laughs> and it's such a frustration um, that it's difficult to articulate. And, and I put myself in the shoes of many people that I know that also experience the same. So going back to the question, the challenge for our customers is how do I make my customer's journey good? How do I ensure that, you know, that my customers is not like what I just you know, described? Because at the end of the day, if your customers have a bad experience, such as the nature of... Um, you know, digital banking. There are so many options and choices mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. 
statistically, okay. if you don't have that good experience with a bank or with a fintech company offering the digital services, I can easily go to someone else yeah, can because it's right. so widely available. Yeah. So that's another challenge. And do you have to blink in the face fee, uh, face recognition solution? We don't, um, right. which I'll um, you know, maybe talk about if I have the opportunity. Um, with, our, with our technology, face fees application, we use what's called passive liveness. So I keep on referring to customer journey. It's all frictionless. Mm -hmm. So it's all point and click. I don't need to look at the application. I, sorry, I do need to look up the application, but I don't need to interact with it. I don't need to blink. I don't need to wink. I don't need to mm -hmm. talk or, or anything that's, that I would call is unnatural, mm -hmm. which makes it difficult to use. One other thing as well, which I think is really important, is that the technology sector has become so advanced, which is fantastic, but the, the flip side to the technology becoming advanced is that the number of choices that customers have and the complexity of all these terminologies that are used makes mm -hmm. it very difficult for customers to see the, the light in, in all the mist of um, options. Mm -hmm. Do I go face? Do I go digital signature? Mm -hmm. Do I go behavioral? Do I go fingerprint? Yeah. And there's so many conflicting stories and news that how you see through that mist is very, very difficult. And one of the things that we as FaceV bring to our customers is clarity um, and choice. So clarity meaning we explain how this technology works. Mm -hmm. Choice meaning we don't just say we suggest using face or fingerprint. We give you the choice. You pick what's best for you. And we can advise and we can suggest which technologies best fit and which best are used for certain journeys for certain mm -hmm. technologies, for certain um, journeys that you as the customer, the banks that we work with or fintech companies want mm -hmm. to have with their customers. Let's talk about ethics in biometrics a bit. Uh, I do agree with you and that uh, really biometrics gives uh, the best user experience, I guess, if we, if we talk about digital uh, customer onboarding. It's <coughs> most of friendly and from the other side this is a security a secured solution giving this actually balance with a great user experience and uh, and security solutions but on the other hand we do see a narration uh, on the internet that um, uh, some companies can sell uh, biological data and then can be uh, harmfully used or misused let's say by the private businesses how do you confront it? It's a great question, Elena. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a challenging question, but mm -hmm. from, from face fee, I mean, first and foremost, um, a couple of things. One is that, you know, the technology that we provide um, has to be consented by the user. So mm -hmm. before anybody does anything, they've got to say, yes, I'm allowed, okay? Mm -hmm. No different to any other vendor. Second thing is, is the way that our um, you know, technology from a, a pure development perspective is developed is using the highest level of encryption. Um, it's meeting and adhering to all of the standards around security, so ISO. Um, we look at the, the data side, so from a GDPR perspective, mm -hmm. we follow all of the guidelines to ensure that the data is safe, to ensure that the way we write our data is using the highest level of encryption. But coupled with that is we work with customers to ensure that when they store that data or where the application's running on their infrastructure, that we help them and work with them to make sure that they are also using the highest level of security that they can within their own domain. Obviously, we don't control mm -hmm. that. That's down to the individuals. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, Elena, if somebody wanted to gain access to that data, they can. And unfortunately, as I'm sure everybody watching this has seen in the media, there's been a number of very high profile cases where data has been stolen and then data has been made available or even worse still sold to people that you wouldn't want your data sold to. It's unfortunately where technology is today. Mm -hmm. That said, <clears throat> I want to cover one little thing which um, is important to understand, particularly around the use of face. Mm -hmm. um, you know, facial recognition has a very bad connotation because everybody paints it with the same brush. Actually, that's, 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 um, that's not correct. The way that FaceFee uses 
facial recognition and the way that it writes the data makes it very challenging for people that steal our information to do anything with it. What does that mean? When we write our data, without getting too technical, we write it in a way, I'll give you a practical example, you download a, a banking app, you look at the camera, it takes a picture of your face, mm -hmm. the source is yes, a picture, but we translate that into a number, a mathematical vector, which is a 256 string um, that doesn't mean anything to anyone. That's stored in the database. Mm -hmm. Next time that you access your mobile banking, you look at the, the camera, it takes, it looks at your picture, but we translate that into a number. So what we're doing is we're comparing numbers at the source to numbers of a database. Mm -hmm. Why am I telling you all of this? I'm telling you this because if somebody were to gain access to the data that we store, all they're going to gain access to is a number, is a vector. So actually in practice, there's nothing that you can really do with that. Mm -hmm. It's very important that, you, that you know, the audience understands that because not every vendor is the same. Not every vendor writes their data in the way that we do as face fee. Mm -hmm. And it's important that you understand that the use of biometrics, in this example, face, has very a large variance of how safe it is, what's stored, and at face we use, we use the highest level of, as I said, encryption, but also the latest in technology to ensure that when we capture information, there's not a lot that fraudists can do with it. And that's very important. So coupled with that, Elena, one of the things that we have adopted with our technology is the use of liveness. Mm -hmm. And for those of you in the audience that's not familiar with liveness, it's the technology that ensures that when somebody is taking a picture of themselves, live in real time, we can ensure that that person is indeed a real person. What's very different about the technology of face fee is that we use what's called passive liveness, mm -hmm. which basically means that I can look at the phone or the webcam and not have to interact mm -hmm. with the technology. So that instantly, as soon as we've taken a picture, we can ensure that the person is real and that the person isn't taking a picture um, or holding a picture up of a person um, to try and spoof the application. Mm -hmm. What's very important to note there is that there are different variants of liveness in the technology sector. And what we as face for you have is something called passive liveness. What that means is I don't have to interact with the application. Mm -hmm. A number of technologies out there um, only work if you interact with it meaning you have to blink or you have to move your head or you've got to look left and right, which makes the whole user journey extremely difficult, extremely cumbersome, and generally people don't complete that process because it doesn't work. How do you think the facial biometrics could uh, be implemented uh, in banking, in digital banking, yeah. besides the <coughs> online and mobile banking applications? Uh, for example, I don't know, we heard recently that, for example, in mm. Japan, right, Japan Railway announced that they will set up uh, facial gates in their two stations uh, in Osaka. Could something, do you think that something like that could be implemented in, uh, in banking? I don't know, right, for example, a customer enters the, the branch and, mm -hmm. you know, usual, uh, using the, the, the facial ID, it is, you know, scanned, yeah. the relationship manager knows already who enters the branch, I don't know, might be connected with CRM, so, you know, the manager knows everything, uh, what what customer has, what what they might need, etc. So, the, 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 you know, the conversation starts already from a, not from a customer uh, authentication, uh, authentication, but from the, you know, from the business conversation. Do you think this is possible or makes sense at all? That's a great question. You know, biometrics has got a number of different use cases and there are many, many um, value, sorry, there's many values that biometrics can bring to the financial sector. I want to mention a couple. So when you think about biometrics, um, a lot of people today think about onboarding, which is what mm -hmm. we were you know, talking about. So right. capturing your face, taking the picture of an ID, which works very well. And obviously there's a lot of value there, um, particularly around um, ensuring the person is who they say they are. We're, we're now taking that, where some of our customers have already taken it, is it can now be adopted and used for general verification. So now, you know, we've gone beyond the just onboarding using Face to accessing your account or mm -hmm. approving a transaction. Mm -hmm. So now 
you know, because it's, as I said, quite widely adopted and because it's so secure, banks could take that and offer it as a service to their customers. And this isn't novel, many banks are doing this today, where a customer can use their face to transfer money, to access their account, to take on a service that the bank offers. That said, it's been taken even further than that, mm -hmm. where we have a customer in Spain, which I can mention, which is Caixa Bank, right. which has now adopted face at ATMs. Uh -huh. You're thinking, ah, what does that mean? Customers can now withdraw money up to a certain value mm -hmm. using face, wow. which is mind-boggling, right? Mm -hmm. So I can go up to, to an ATM machine without the use of a card. Mm -hmm. The camera recognizes who I am. And again, up to a certain value, it allows me to take out money. Mm -hmm. So it's just an example for how wide or how widely biometrics has now been adopted within the banking sector. Mm -hmm. Not just within banking services, but also how, how users interact with the infrastructure of a bank. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Japan Railways. The banking sector that is more from the traditional banking sector, they have branches, they have buildings, can also use biometrics to recognise customers. So when, as you said, I can walk into a branch and I can recognise that I'm Rico and I can now start to use that to offer different services. Mm -hmm. I could be a VIP customer, I could be a certain profile to then point certain mm -hmm. offers that I might have as a bank to me. Mm -hmm. Not just em not just customers, but employees. Right. Accessing um, a corporate building, mm -hmm. um, again, many, many benefits to that. The um, the experience of an employee, not having to have a card, mm -hmm. it's much safer, it's much secure. I said there are many, many use cases to the use of biometrics across customer, general banking services and how they interact with the infrastructure, also to employees that I could spend another hour talking mm -hmm. about it. But it is now, we're seeing it more and more being widely adopted. And I gave mm -hmm. you some examples where. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are your nearest plans? What's your customers here in Europe will We'll hear from you the nearest year. Great question. Um, so, you know, Face Fee's um, goal is to become one of the prominent players um, to f mitigate and fight financial crime through the use of EKYC and AML. The investment that we've made is to broaden our um, scope globally. So, the last six to eight months, personally, I've been taking the company into Europe. Middle East and Africa, mm -hmm. and that journey is going to continue. Um, so we have um, invested in this region, Central and Eastern Europe, amongst many other countries across Europe, where we're putting people on the ground. I'm a big believer of having local presence, language, and just the confidence there is there is someone there on the ground. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue that. The audience is also going to be uh, seeing a lot more development from a technology perspective from Face Fee. Um, I've spoken a little bit about biometrics today and some of the technologies that we have, but we're growing that. We're adding more to our portfolio. We're adding more to the choice so that customers not only can pick from the best of breed, but also we're taking our customers on a journey where we can take the customers beyond the onboarding into the what does that customer do and what is that customer doing once they're a customer. Mm -hmm. So there are other biometrics that we are looking at, which I won't go into today, which uh, the audience seeing here today will see as part of the, um, the face feed portfolio. Mm -hmm. One of the things we're also doing as well, which you hear a lot of us talking about, is how we are meeting the IDAS regulation. It's a very hot topic, mm -hmm. uh, particularly within the European Union. With IDAS 2.0 coming up uh, at the end of the year, a lot of the vendors within this space are now racing to meet the standards that is uh, adhered to or um, stated by the I, uh, the IDAS uh, regulator or regulation. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So one of the things that we are doing is we are IDAS compliant and we are monitoring how IDAS is evolving particularly I dice zero. So you'll hear a lot more from Face Fee on how we're doing that, where we're doing that. And also in terms of e-wallets, how we work and how we play in that whole subject, which is a very broad uh, subject. So you'll hear a lot more from Face Fee um, on that subject. And you know, to summarize what I'm saying here is that we are pioneers, we will continue to be pioneers, and we're gonna see our technology evolving with the demands of our customers and we're going to spend a lot of time listening 
to particularly the financial sector and digital uh, services around the financial sector to ensure that we have our finger on the pulse, to ensure that our technology meets and exceeds the demands of our customers. And um, I'm very proud to be part of that. Good luck with it, Enrique, and thank you thank very you much. Thank you very much. For this conversation. Thank you.